Hi guys, Jordan from PMP Campers. I'm going to do a hand of a video on your first and the Nexo. Um, so if we start on the near side now, uh, we've got the boiler vent just out here um, at the very back. So if you've got that lit on gas or however way, you'll feel hot air coming out through the bottom just here. Next to that is the hookup point. So if you're at home or on your campsite, wherever, that's where you plug your hookup cable into. Um, you know, that's, that's basically pretty standard way of charging the van up or you know cooling the fridge down a few other bits and pieces I'll show you that inside um, the vents for the fridge so you've got quite a big fridge in there so that's why they're quite far spread apart the fresh water inlet so you open that up by pushing in and round to the left and it will just come out in your hand and then in and round to the right until it stops and then just pop your key in I'll just show you that sorry about the moving around Whichever key it is, like that, until it stops again, take the key out, and you see there I cannot, cannot take that out at all. So that's locked up. In the actual cab, there's not much to show you on the near side, I don't think, uh, apart from obviously your electric window, and you can lock and unlock the door from inside. Uh, what else we got? Um, I'll show you these bits in a minute when I go around to the uh, driver's side, actually, because they're more sort of driver related. Um, you've got a little bit of a, a sort of top glove box up here. Your airbag sits in this front piece. And obviously your main glove box down the bottom. Massive storage in the actual door cards as well. Um, and then to actually sort of adjust the seats up and down at the front, you use these bits on the side and the back is just this part. That's the same on both seats. Um, to actually unlock the bonnet or open the bonnet, you actually need the ignition key itself. It goes in through this slot here. You turn it to the left, and that releases it. And then you turn it to the right to actually allow it to come up. Um, under the bonnet itself, you've got your brake fluid attached to the servo down the back. Power steering fluid goes in here at the front. Engine oil, you check that through there, through that dipstick. And then your actual engine oil goes in through this top cap. You've also got your engine coolant, which is over here in this reservoir on the right, and your washer fluid. If you want to jump start the van, because the engine battery doesn't sit under the bonnet, you have to take this little bit out from here, which is your positive. So that's if you're gonna, if you're gonna jump start it, that's your positive point. And then you can pop that back in like that, turn it around to the right. And then your actual negative is, they've got this sign here saying not a negative. So you can actually use a little sign down here somewhere, uh, engine hoist point so this is probably your best bet for a negative this piece here or um, normally there is actually a, a proper bit for it but yeah I think that's because it's got a negative here with a little engine hoist sign so it's probably that bit there yeah so positive and negative um, so in the actual driver's side cab itself got a few nice bits and pieces in fact quite a lot of nice bits and pieces um, so you've got air conditioning which works by pushing in the button there whilst you turn it around to however you know fast you want the fan to run fan control setter so you basically where the actual air goes to and then obviously your temperature setting there you got a 12 volt point just there so if you took that out it's like a cigarette lighter point um, if you needed one or whatever you need, like a charger or something will go in there. The original Ford radio, so it's a double din sized radio. Um, six speed manual gearbox reverse is lift up from the bottom over and up to the top left. Hazard lights there in the middle there. Obviously you've got your indicators on the left hand side. Uh, your bit down here is basically just to control your um, radio from down here. So that's your volume, mode, uh, you can actually seek, you know, through channels and bits and pieces. But, you know, you can sort of work that stuff out, uh, see what you want. These two buttons here on the side of the uh, steering wheel are for your actual cruise control. So to switch it off, it's the bottom button, switch it on at the top. And you've also got these on the side, which is basically setting the speed and also resume. So it would resume from where it was before. Washers and wipers, push in on the right hand stalk to get the washers to actually um, wash the screen, if you like. Um, lights, 
side lights and then main beam. And that's it. So you've got your, over here on the right, you've also got your electric adjusting mirrors. So turn it to which mirror you want to move and then use it as a joystick to actually move it. And obviously your electric windows on the driver's side as well. Um, yeah, so I think that's it actually for in the cab. I carry on now. So it's a bit tight up against the other van, but um, I'll just show you this. So you've got the gas locker. So to switch the gas on is anti-clockwise on that top little nut there. And then to switch it off is clockwise around to the right. Um, and it really is as simple as that. When you come to swapping over to the other bottle, you literally undo that big nut that I'm showing you now, and then pop it onto the other one, tighten it up just over hand tight with a, with a spanner. So just give it a good old um, sort of pull over with a spanner when you've got it hand tight. Um, and then that's it, just switch her on. Nice and easy. So, you then got your toilet cassette locker, which you need to push both of these buttons in to open it. So I'll just do that now. So you've got one hand really. To take it out, you lift up on the bottom bit there and pull it all the way out. Hold the yellow button down when you're emptying it. Um, and then fill this back up with a bit of blue fluid. That's about it really. Um, in the actual rear locker, you've got your boiler, which sits over there in that locker. And then there'll be a little uh, drain off for that. But I am just gonna jump inside now because it's just started to rain. So I'll show you the bits on the inside. Right, so straight away, I'll just show you. If you're gonna be getting in and out of the van a lot, you've got access to using this, which is actually really handy because it does hurt when you hit yourself on that. If that's down like that and you try and jump in, it does hurt when you try and do that. So lift it out of the way if you're not gonna be, you know, if you're gonna be getting in and out of it a lot. But if not, put it down and then close the door. And that's how it actually closes onto that. Um, right, so you got your control panel up at the top which is really nice and straightforward. Um, to switch the entire thing off, press this little circle button here. Um, the reason these lights still work is because they're sort of like easy entry lights, so you don't have to have the control panel on first. If it's dark when you come back to the van, you can leave these top lights on from this top switch. Um, <clears throat> so we'll turn it on for now. So now all the 12 volt stuff is sort of initiated. You can you know, turn whatever you want on now. Um, but essentially, if you had a hookup cable plugged in, this would be lit up up here, so you'd be able to you know, see that your charger is working. And then all of this stuff on the right hand side is all water related. So the pump is on. To check your fresh water level, press up on the button, and that shows a quarter of a tank. If you look at the bottom, the bottom bit, and then press down, and that shows you your wastewater level. So no wastewater, and then quarter of a tank of fresh and then you've got your engine battery so click that one and then look at the top scale just shy of 13 volts in your engine battery and then this one here is your ledger and just over 12 and a quarter volts so, so sort of 12.3 volts and that is absolutely spot on for a van that's you know just sat around without a hookup cable plugged in or the engine's not running and all that sort of stuff so that is absolutely perfect um so the pump is on. Now the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do when you actually come in to use the van is just come to the sink, cold water. And just make sure that there's no real air pockets that are doing sort of cough and splutter everywhere. And then hop. Now doing the hop ensures that you've got your boiler full of water. And before you start trying to use your boiler, it does need to be full. So, um, now that I've done that, so I've, I've made sure that there's water coming through there. It's all, you know, nice and clear, no real air. Um, I can then go ahead and start using the boiler, which I'll just show you to do here. So you've got a combi boiler. So basically it works in two ways. It heats up your water and it also heats up the van. You can do both at the same time or separately. So if I just show you how to do that, if you want the hot water only, you go up one to, to 40 degrees or up two to 60 degrees, all right? Now that won't light up because I've not got the gas on, all right? But basically all you need to do is switch the gas on and that's it, you're good to go. The yellow light in there means that water is heating up. So if I had it down one, which is heating only, the orange light will go off, you see? Although if I go down two, 
to this bottom one, which is heating and hot water, you notice the orange light comes back on. So that's how you know that the water is being heated up. All right, so heating only is one down, hot water is two up, and then both is the bottom one. So once you've got the grips of that, it is really nice and simple, really easy. Um, and you know, it doesn't take much to sort of get used to that. Um, let me just show you this as well. So this is your boiler down here. So you can get to that from in the, uh, you know, the thing I was pointing out to you there. You can still get in here for that. But if you wanted to drain your boiler out, all you need to do is just twist this top part and that'll drain your boiler out. Uh, to stop that from happening, there's a little blue button right at the very back. You probably can't see it on the video. But once you turn this, I'll do it now actually. So turn this and then a little button at the back. Well, well turn this back to where it was, sorry and then push the little button in at the back. All right, so twist it to drain the water out and then twist it back and push the button in at the back. And that's it. That's the only thing you should ever really need to get to in the, in the boiler cupboard that is, um, just to drain it. And the reason you would drain it is if you're in sort of like the absolute worst bit of winter where it's absolutely freezing, freezing cold and you're not gonna be using the van at all then you would go in there and you would drain the water out from the boiler just so that none of your pipes sort of uh, freeze up and split um, because that is pricey when it comes to fixing that. So just make sure that you do that um, beforehand. Um, right, so tilt and turn TV aerial. So literally to use that, loosen off this part of the top, push it up and then just sort of work out. You, to be fair, it is always different depending on where you are or where you're parked or whatever. So you will need to sort of work that out yourself um, where that needs to be. But it is pretty simple. When you get there, it, you, the best way to do it really is if you go into a campsite, just have a look at where everyone else's is pointing and then just copy theirs. Um, and then switch on your booster. So you've got that there, see it lights up. And then that's already all sort of routed through to your telly here. So you've got the aerial point, which is there, which will be routed directly over to that booster. And then once your telly is all the way out, you can then do whatever you want and, you know, uh, choose your channels, do whatever. Um, Kelly did mention she wanted me to sort of show you how to pop this back in all the way. Um, so basically to get it out, what you need to do is push this little bit in, but to put it all the way back in, just push on it as far as it will go. And then you see that, hear that click there. So that's it totally locked up. And then like I say, to actually get it out again, push in on this and pull the telly. So I just want to show you, if you just push it straight back, it does go all the way in and then it leaves you enough space to close that down as well. So it's pretty straightforward with that. So you literally just pop it all the way in, nice and easy. Um, and that's it. So uh, the other thing to point out in this cupboard, if I switch the booster off now, is your RCD. So your trip switch is in here. So if you put a dodgy plug into one of the sockets around the van, um, whether it be that one up there or, you know, there's a few dotted around, um, then that's where it will trip from, down there. So if you haven't got any power coming out of it, just check there first. Um, in the back, got two whacking great big windows, which is really nice. They're normally, well, see, for example, there on the, on the van next door, it's quite a small window. Um, but yeah, whacking great big windows in there, uh, which is nice. Um, so fridge, it's nice and easy. So you've got a Dometic fridge and it's a three-way. So to light it up on gas, which is that gas and electric, which is the next one down, are the two best ways to get it cold. Um, I personally think they're about as, about as good as each other. So to light it up on gas, push there. And if the gas was on, it would light up. If you had a hookup cable plugged in, you could go to the next one there. You see it's lighting up red. That's because there's no cable plugged in. If you had a cable plugged in, that would be green. And if your engine's running, again, red. Um, so that's because the engine's not running. So if I started the engine up now, that would go green um, because you've got what's called a split relay. So as long as the engine's running and the alternator is charging the engine battery, your leisure battery is also being charged up in turn via the split relay. So that also powers this way of cooling the fridge down. So the way to actually use these fridges is 
either get the fridge cold first, perhaps the night before, or at least a good few hours before you go away on gas or electric hookup, and then just switch it down to this one here when you're, you know, when you start your engine and drive off. You obviously cannot have your gas on when you're driving, so you can't leave it on gas. You can't have a hookup plugged in, obviously, again, <laughs> when you're driving, so it has to be the, uh, the uh, 12 volt. Um, your oven slash grill works just literally from this point in here. So you push in for the igniter and then just push it round to the right for the grill or round to the left for the oven and that will light up and just do its own thing. And that's all in one unit and it's nice and sort of, I think it's quite pretty uh, where they have it all on the top a uh, bit like that. So pop that back away like that. Um, your hob, you will need a clicker or an igniter, long light, long reach lighter or something to get in there and light those up um, because there's no ignition on those whatsoever. However, there is a thermocouple on all of these. So basically what that does is, as with any of the other gas items in the entire van, if, the, if you lit the flame up and then somehow the flame got blown out by the wind or someone blowing it out or whatever, the thermocouple would notice that there's no burning gas coming through anymore and it would stop the excess gas from coming through um, and filling up the van with gas basically. So that's how they work and they all work. That's all been tested as part of the hab check as standard. Um, right, bathroom, I'll show you in the bathroom. So I won't show you how the shower works, uh, although it is down there. You can put, pop it in up there as well if that makes it any easier. Um, but I won't show you how that works because I will get soaking wet. Essentially, it's the same tap as the uh, sink there. You just pull it open and just choose how much hot water and how much cold water. It's just like any other household tap, to be honest. Um, so nice and easy. Exactly the same with the sink as well. If you find, although you shouldn't because your um, pump is submersible, so it's a 12 volt pump only. It doesn't work on pressure. So if you find one day that you go to pull a bit of water through and you're struggling to get it to come through, it normally means there's an airlock somewhere and that can be anywhere at all. So if you go around and just pull every single tap, even the actual toilet set as well, just push the button to flush it, which is this one here. So push the button. And you can hear, I'll just show you, water go around inside and then empty it, and open the flap, close the flap. Um, yeah, so if you find you can't get any water out through the sink tap or any other any of the other taps, just go around and pull the water through just to get through, get rid of any air, and then it should all be fine. Um, the other thing to point out is with the toilet, you have to have that flap closed in order to take it out from outside. So whenever you're finished, well, for two reasons, if you don't close that flap, you one won't be able to take the, the actual cassette out from outside but also you, the smells coming into the van will be horrible. So you just need to make sure that you have that closed at all times if you're not using it. Um, but other than that, yeah, pretty straightforward in the bathroom. Nice clean bathroom. Um, probably because it's only had one owner to be honest. So it's a, a really nice little van. Um, yeah, so there are obviously lights dotted around the place which you can adjust and sort of switch on or off depending on what you want. Um, but basically you've got this dinette seat here so you've got two belted seats forward facing um you've also got a whacking great big skylight up here which i will just show you so if you push in on this button that allows you to take this down and then just pull all the way out towards you all the way and then that's it just put it all the way back in to close it up um right that's it the uh, other thing to point out with these windows you've got a latch style um hinge or whatever you want to call it so the one thing to be careful with these is that you don't open it up too close to something um so for example if you were parked right up against the wall or something like that or another van or whatever if you open up this window all the way out to it you have to open it a tiny bit extra to actually bring it back in so if you can't push it out that tiny bit extra You'll find that you'll have to take the actual bracket off uh, and it's just those two screws there but don't worry about that it's not something you need to worry about but just bear in mind that if you pull it out really close to something you really got to be careful that you can actually push it out a little bit extra to bring it back in um i'll just give you an example so I'll open it out until you get that click yeah now i can't put it straight back in i'm just not pulling hard but i can you know 
it's not coming back in. I can't pull it back in at all. So to actually pull it back in, you need to push out a little bit, or wherever it is, like that. You see? So when I pushed it out a little bit extra, that's when it allowed it to come back in. But if I didn't do that, it would just stay there all day. You know, you wouldn't be able to bring it back in. So just bear that in mind. Don't open it up too close to anything. Um, but otherwise you're fine on that. If, 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 you're, if you're away away from something like this, then you don't need to worry about it at all. But there you go, it's just something to point out. Um, ladder for the overcab bed is up here, obviously. Uh, that just hooks onto this um, bit here. Allow you to get up to the top. Um, yeah, I think that's about it really. I don't know if there's anything else I can show you. Um, no, all right. So yeah, if you think I've missed anything out or you want anything covering uh, again or you know clarifying, then just let us know. But otherwise, I look forward to seeing you soon to collect your van. Thanks very much.